Yi's Story, Part 5 Questions and Answers by Lauren Wright. Key's rescuer led him down several small side streets, through half a dozen darker alleyways, and carefully skirted two different patches of bad rock, stopping briefly at the first to point out to Key the symbol that marked it. Key had trouble spotting it at first, but then he saw it. A stack of three small rocks, the biggest on the bottom and the smallest on top, carefully balanced in a lopsided curved shape like the barest, most basic shape of a person. That'll mark where the Mountain Mother has already used the rock to summon one of her children to her. If you find a spot that hasn't been marked yet, set the signal, then spill blood on the stone to satisfy the mother. Your own blood or another's doesn't matter. Key's rescuer, who still hadn't given their name, instructed shortly. Key nodded, committed the process to memory, and carefully followed as he was led away. They stopped eventually outside a door that had a dead rat pinned to it, fresh enough not to stink yet. Keep your name and your business to yourself, Key was instructed before his grumpy rescuer entered. Key followed close behind. What do you have? An individual behind a rough-hewn counter called Gruffly. Give us a taste of the rat's tail, Key's rescuer replied. The bartender nodded, then said, Take any table you want. You'll get it shortly. Key's rescuer chose the table farthest from the door and sat down with their back to the wall, the door clearly visible. Key went to sit down across the table from them, but was yanked to sit in the seat next to the, his rescuer. Fool boy. Never sit with your back to the door unless you want to end up with a knife stuck in it. Key gulped and nodded. A young woman, maybe just a little older than Key, brought three mugs on a tray and set it down on the table. She left without speaking. Two of the mugs were filled with a strongly scented alcohol. It curled the hair in Key's nose as he sniffed at the mug set before him. The third mug contained a rock, Key saw, before his rescuer turned the mug upside down over it and... After pricking their thumb with a small blade, smeared the bead of blood across the bottom of the mug. A small series of runes lit up, glowing a soft green. Alright, now we can speak freely. I know you're confused, and by all rights, you shouldn't be here. Key's rescuer relaxed their body against the seat, sipping from the mug. Key just looked at them and shrugged. Seriously, though. How foolish do you have to be to come to the shale with no idea of how to navigate it safely, no way to make yourself heard, and not the faintest clue of how to find what you're looking for? They turned a sharp eye on Key and asked, You are looking for Lin, right? If this is just an adventuresome romp before you take a civilized apprenticeship uptown, then I'll be breaking my word to Lin and making sure this little... Adventure of yours is one that you will never repeat. Key stared them down, then took out the lantern, the knot that Lin had made for him. He set it on the table and withdrew his hand, waiting expectantly. Right then. Lin keeps his own counsel, and it's never safe to advertise where you're going to be, or not be, as the case may be. That being said... I've known the lad for a number of years now, and one thing's for sure, he'll go to any lengths to find what he's searching for. Last I heard, he's got word of a smuggling crew that had a way beyond the wall. What with the tolls and regulations being what they are, taking the legal way out wasn't likely an option. My best guess is, he's hooked up with that crew and gone beyond the wall. Key knew his shock was writ large over his face. Nobody got through the wall, not unless they had the money or the rank to go through the gate. The guard patrolled regularly, consistently, because any gap that could be used to get out was a gap that could let the monsters in, and anybody found creating a gap like that, putting the whole city at risk, forfeited their freedom, or in more extreme cases, their life. Another movement's thought moved Keefe away from the shock and into despair. 
There was no way he'd be able to find the smugglers that Keat was working with. For one, they would have as much reason to trust him as he had reason to trust them. That is to say, none at all. And for two, even with his best efforts, he knew how out of place he was in this district. Milo and Lynn both had done everything in their power to make sure that he had a better chance than they did, even if they disagreed viciously on how to go about doing so, and he knew only the barest information about how to navigate the shale. He'd learned more over the course of this afternoon than he'd ever known before. And honestly, he'd very likely end up missing or dead if he tried to continue down this path. Next to him, Key's rescuer sighed awkwardly. Listen, Lynn's got a decent head on his shoulders. Cunning as a fox he is, no doubt about it. They tried to reassure Key. Nothing to do but wait for him to get back. But the doubt in their voice spoke volumes about their uncertainty that Lynn would, in fact, return. Key sat, thinking hard about his options. He couldn't just sit around and do nothing. And while it was true that very few people got through the gate without rank or money to ease their path, there was one other group that routinely went beyond. Adventurers. Key thought about the offer that had been extended to him and sighed internally. He knew what choice he was going to make, and he also knew that his choice was going to break Milo's heart. 